阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。All right, so we'll, to, we'll continue with today's session. Um, last part of this, um, you know, people in high places, high authority, you know, the kind of uh, mistakes they uh, easily commit. Today, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll begin with the last sentence. So last week we talked quite a bit. Speaking of this clause, I just watched a movie. Uh, I just watched a movie, uh, Jane, uh, Judy, Jane, Jane, I think. Jane, this one, uh, yeah, it's quite morbid. The World War One, the unnecessary sufferings and people pushed towards, you know, um, slaughter against each other. It's very graphic. It's in Netflix, uh, but I can say that it, you know, it brings out that. Sense of hopelessness and pain and you know sufferings, uh, those blind optimism. Those young people were being uh, coddled into war, and ends up f facing the reality. Although it's quite uh, you know graphic, but it's you know it's do it because of the you know the right reason to aware to be aware of the horrors of war, and I uh, recommend people who can take it can have a look at it. It's a Netflix. It's called The Silent on the Western Front. It's in German language. Um, yeah, it is. It does not glorify killing. Does not glorify. Not. It's not one of those Hollywood shooting. It's um, it's 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 quite. You know, they try to stick close to do documentary style. You know, trying to depict you know lives of the everyday soldier from a young person full of patriotism, pushed into this meat grinder, horrors, the death of the friends, and yeah. The sufferings. So, this uh, this clause is quite um, it, it etched into my mind when I you know uh, mentioned about this clause twice. You know, kill an abuser and the troops and prisoners of war. And uh, with this in my mind, I watched that movie. It's getting stronger. Yeah. So definitely a good watch. Good reflection on why people slaughter each other, even though they have no beef with each other or never even meet each other before. Karma, guys. Now, so what we did last time is we talked quite a bit on, you know, the right and wrong. How do we operate on that? You know, because it's it's, it's not a clear cut thing, and it, it, it ultimately has to lead back to your value system. What informs your value? That it ultimately becomes, um, you know, a judgment system where this is the right thing to do. This is not the right thing to do. Eventually, we need to have that. Otherwise, we can't operate. And you know, in 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 in, no matter how great it is, there are certain lines we cannot cross. Uh, for example, like you know, killing. It's very common. We don't do killing. And obviously, uh, the most societal issues, like you know, the taboos that uh, we all you know do not um, permit. Uh, you know, like um, like especially with children, we are prote very protective of the minors. Those are the you know clear line that every society, um, most society would draw, and then there is the one that is more uh, how to say nuance, you know more day to day, you know what do you think is right, what do you think is wrong, that kind of uh, topic, um, you know, uh, and this relies on your value, and Leo Fund has expanded quite a bit on that part, so to bring it into this session, uh, we also need to understand first what did our view arise from. You know the view that informs us what is right and what is wrong, uh, and in Buddhism, because we are learning Buddhism, uh, it's important to have, uh, you know, it's important to, um, you know, learn the right view, and and the right view is determined by you know, uh, is it fully aware of the consequences, cause, past, and present, and is it um, sound, you know, logically, reasonable, rational, not driven by emotions or blind devotion um, 
and there's a very fine line between blind devotion and you know strong faith full confidence so this kind of thing um uh it's you know it takes time to 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 develop and it, there are trial and errors of course there are shortcuts to get to that place where in buddhism we have noble eightfold path ba zheng dao so must do is must you know noble eightfold path the right view is number one um uh and the right view will inform uh is 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 not something you can get overnight um it's something that you need to put it into test in real life and understand uh you know this thing will cause that kind of consequences this kind of will if it uh if it's not right what w- what would be the consequences so the right in this sense means that it brings out favorable desirable consequences in our case liberation from samsara that's the right view if we stuck to the desires of the of the sensory you know the smell smell the touch the um you know the taste uh, the sound or even the thought you know thought is also one of the stimuli and we're not able to let go or not able to navigate freely then it's the wrong view from this level All right if you go to the the standard setting lower you know just on you know uh, how to be a decent person then what is not decent is purposely purposely harming people purposely maliciously harming people physically mentally sexually and psychologically etc etc that is very like you know bottom 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 line so you know as you progress in your cultivation what determines the right view the, st- uh, the standards will get higher and higher as it goes um for people in the heavenly realm say we're using buddhist um uh world view right say the people in the human realm uh you know five precepts is the right view right view the right and against five precepts is the wrong but if you want to go into the heavenly realm there are two form desire and form form realm desire realm you know you you have to add on top you know the space is you know the four um the four uh boundless quant- uh, quality uh infinite um boundless meta i think boundless uh, uh merits uh you know compassion um loving kindness uh so basically it's a joy and uh uh sure means letting go generosity yes 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 generosity and um yeah this these are the qualities that has to add on top of our you know the five precepts so this quality does uh, this is not set imposed upon you but rather this is a condition you need to achieve in order to attain that state of mind so that's why it's important to have a a right understanding you know um and this cannot be uh, given in one day and obviously from the way i present this i'm not really clear myself uh, i'll i i lay out bare here right now um i'm still discovering i'm still learning but the faster way than this trial and error and hit the nail and then say this is not the right view i have to turn back is follow someone who already has proven themselves a track record a good track record all right it's like instead of learning swimming by yourself you go to a swimming coach he knows what not to do in the water he knows what to do in the water you may not understand at all what he's talking about all right he might tell you to do something that you don't understand just let go of the uh hi kim welcome we're talking about this uh you know uh very important clause in taishan gaim pian oh, glad to hear your uh, view as we progress i'm just going to you know revise you know because um some of us were not here all the time and i just like to you know repeat what i say as well to help me clarify my idea my 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 understanding and you guys can you know chip in as you as i go you know anytime so back to this point so like the faster way than you trial and error yourself is to um you know find a coach who actually can swim basically you know right view means you can float you're not sinking you're not uh you know if drown uh, and get foot worse and worse for your condition uh, and 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 it keeps you afloat first and then you can you can swim and then you can swim better you can swim faster you can swim elegantly yeah that's that's the level so you you can do it yourself you can find it out you can d- determine you can test all sorts of style and anything 
but nothing is faster than having someone who's already a coach, a accomplished Olympic swimmer, who knows all sorts of techniques from survival to elegance, um, uh, and then to t teach you. And somehow they can understand the level you are and throw you some tips and, and, and coach you towards the path that uh, speeds up your progress. All right. In Buddhism, say, you know, how to attain right view the faster way. Uh, all right. First thing is, there are conditions. You need to empty the glass. Hence the word honest or um, being not honest. In this case, it's more um, being receptive of the teaching. You know, receptive of what was told to you. Even though you don't understand, you can't see it, you can't prove it, you can't uh, sense it with your six senses. Thought, uh, sound, touch, hear, uh, smell, uh, sight. Uh, even you can't comprehend it, thoughts. You know. So the six senses, you know, sometimes what Buddha say, which is the accomplished Olympic swimmer in the sea of, navigating the sea of samsara, is, uh, you know, beyond our capability to understand just because we were not there. We haven't dipped our toe long enough yet. So if we have uh, the capacity to accept, to empty it, whatever, you know, little we have, Whatever we thought, that's it. You know, that's the whole world is just in the cup. That's it. Nothing else outside that. If we can empty that and allowing, you know, the um, the coach to teach you some methods that can help you speed up faster, then your progress will get much better. Uh, that um, that takes that depends on the person who receive it. You know, um, so right view in this sense. Is you know empty your uh, empty your uh, how to say understand who is the right first thing you need to identify who is the accomplished swimmer first uh, not a con man but an actual accomplished person uh, and the way to do that is you know ex uh, observe understand what they say and what they did and obviously Buddha has passed away we can't see what he did but we have heard of him from different traditions and you know the text. You know, the stories that chronicalize his actions and his deeds, his speech. Uh, don't look for the supernatural. Those things are just a result of it. What he actually wants to show is usually his attitude towards things, towards, you know, different things that are thrown at him. That's how you know this person is for real or not for real. All right? Um, because there are many accomplished speakers. They can speak very well, but how many people actually can, you know, practice what they preach uh, observation you can observe hearing from a legitimate source uh, and also believe your instinct you know, most people have a good instinct uh, that instinct usually come from you know obviously coupled with ration reason uh, proper reasoning um, uh, it's a powerful combination you know instinct also it's it's very powerful instinct especially the one before first thought uh, you know when you encounter this uh, situation the one that before your first thought arise, don't think about it, guys. You can't think about it. It just come out, and 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 then after that, your mind process it and all that. Uh, most of the time, it will turn out to be quite true. But you know, to make everyone able to follow, it's best you follow a text or scripture or a um, you know a teacher, you know, who propagate the teaching, who has good track record of being a person who is you know practicing what he pe preach and especially people who has proven with time especially time time is an element character and uh, can be proven with time all right like master chinko himself has proven himself 60 years that's a very powerful track record um that you know shake shakes away any form of uh, slanders and doubt that people might have in the beginning um because when he was young, we might not know. He's untested yet. Uh, only people who are close to him or personally coach him knows. But as he go out and actually, you know, cultivate, actually encounter all sorts of myriad of situations, he has proven himself uh, that he was on the right path and is able to point out people after him on the right path. Some method he give might not be able to realize immediately. Some are not comprehensible. Some are... Um, you know, five, six steps ahead, which is not 
immediately achievable, but it's the right view. They show you the plan. So what you must do being responsible to yourself is to find out what you can take from there and what you can immediately action. All right. It's a sea vast. There are so many techniques. There are so many ways, you know, to cultivate yourself, your behavior, your speech, your thought. Um, it's your responsibility to understand where you're at. You know, how's your progress? And also, importance of having good friends. In Buddhism, we call Kalyana Metta, the spiritual friends. Or in Chinese, we have a very famous word, Shan Zhi Si. Uh, this is shared across all Buddhist tradition. We all need San Zhi Si. We all need Kalyana Metta. We all need spiritual friends. People who grow your character, your spiritual, in a positive direction, in a empowering direction. All right. It cannot be done without. There's a whole point of having Dharma place, Dharma center. It gives a condition for these people to meet. All right. It can be in your daily life as well. But yeah. So back to this point, right view is not a simple, uh, you know, one stroke. You know, follow the book and you'll be fine. Right view is also understand the book and they're able to put it in practice and able to, you know, like a washing machine. You know, each cycle wash one layer of dirt away, and eventually your right view, if it's strong and strengthened, it becomes a powerful uh, force that cannot be shaken by anything. Hence, Samadhi. Buting. Butong. Mm. The strongest, strongest the right view. Um, so this kind of combination of confidence and, and, uh, you know, and, and right, uh, proper reasoning and testing is very useful, I think, especially for our modern mindset. You know, we have a scientific background, but we also have a nice, um, you know, long tradition passed to us, traditional Chinese culture, the, or you know, if you're in, even in the West, you have your own cult, traditional culture as well. Uh, and then this Buddhist culture, which is merged with Chinese culture, or if you're from the South, you, you know, merged with the local uh, culture as well. So this, this thing comes together and, and this is how we can operate, you know. We can test it, but we also need to have enough, we have need to have a degree of confidence based on Reason, sound reason. This person has a good character, has proven himself, master proven himself 60 years, Buddha's teaching proven themselves for 2,500 years, Confucius has proven his teaching for 3,000 plus years. And look, despite all the you know downfalls, sometimes the bad apples, the bad uh, examples, uh, all this kind of uh, behavior from certain group that are so, so-called representing these te- teachers, um, they are strong record of people who are talented who has you know attained achieved you know results by like six patriarch of the zan chan school liu zu huinan he's a proof he's a result all right and he's a result and his influence stays with us throughout the whole world until today all right what i'm trying to say is time is the best answer that means it's not a quick, easy, and fast. Um, hi, Alison. Welcome. Uh, we're, we're continuing on this Tai San Gai Pian, the treaties and response retributions. Uh, I'm just trying to, try to explain the importance of right view. Uh, I will leave a few uh, 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 10 or 15 minutes for us to talk about. Or if you really have any uh, point that co- re- correspond to you, feel free to chip in anytime. Okay? Uh, all right, so I'll continue. So the, uh, uh, this this point of what I'm trying to say is those things with time, record, track record, you know, if they still lasting until nowadays, chances, high chances are, you know, in the very least, they are uh, true stuff, you know, they t- stand the test of time. That's the part that echoes with me immediately when I hear Master Ching Kung say that. Not just because he said that. It's because this thing has been proven and these people they produce under this teaching, you know, Buddhist teaching, Confucius teaching, uh, traditional Chinese teaching, or you know the or tra- various traditional teachings throughout the world. You know, those good stuff that uh, they left behind. They produce um, famous people, good people. In the Buddhism, we have the six patriarch. Uh, in Confucian, we have a lot. Mr. Fan, Zhong Yan, uh, Mr. Zheng Guo Fan. Those are latest edition. And the UFA. All these people were well educated in this. All right, so these are the right view. 
right view is not something say I say it's right you have to say it's right it's not like that okay right view is something that um, sorry I just want this is very important I don't mind repeating it right view is something t that takes both confidence in the person who taught you that means you need to observe that person has it has a good track record or not all right and also testing it in your own life your own life is experiment put it into your test uh, and understand that my capability might not be there yet hence you know this is an issue I have encountered anger or lust or uh, greed or hatred those things sway me so much but you know if you have a right view you understand that the right way to deal with this is etc 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 and who is the example you know that's how that's how we operate otherwise if you just by yourself it's like you're you're blindfolded you're trying to find your way out of the room it's gonna be harder all right so always have a reference point um, so that's where buddha master ching kong all the masters master Xue Wu, uh, master uh, Wu Xing, and all the respected teachers of the world respected religious leaders of the world or respected leaders of the world it doesn't have to be religious it can be you know, any any field even in your own work colleague even in your own office all right people who have proven themselves with their the character the kind of people they are those things very immediate you understand when in trouble is this person really willing to go out their way and help you all right you can trust them right if you have issues or if you hand them over an assignment they will get it done properly if you have issues they will talk to you to get it done those kind of thing all right so if a buddhist we look at buddha we understand his teaching not just understand we observe whether the teaching is uh, uh how to say implementable or not if it's not implementable chances are because we are not there yet all right and and we need to find someone who has already achieved in history record and what kind of achievement they did what kind of influence they have in that in the particular area that gives me so much confidence at least this is how i gain my root in in this and no matter how bad i behave or something or no matter how hard uh, i encounter i will not be swayed because you know i understand the cause and effect i now understand that there is a person who actually walked before me in this path and achieve it and so i will not make the mistake of twisting the right becoming wrong the wrong become the right basically mudding up okay so that's what we talk about and now i'm just adding more you know reflection on this after a few weeks um we talk about this and then this is the last part of the uh, chapter three so just to, to give context to everyone right i introduced chapter one section one it's about what is Taishan Ka Impian? What is treatise on response and retribution? Basically, it's a book on cause and effect, book that, you know, your your deeds follows you like a shadow follows your body. You know, what goes around comes around. Um, it can go in many forms. In terms of time, you know, uh, you know, the way you treat, the most simplest one, the way you treat others, in future others will treat you the same way. Or the way you treat your parents, in future your children will treat you the same way. It's a very fair thing. And all debt must be paid, all right. No matter what, uh, no matter how long it delays, you know. So, for example, blood debt must be paid with blood. That's the most severe one, and it comes in the form of war, comes in the form of robbery, comes in the form of sudden attack. Those things you cannot see, but the effect is very real. And people might say this is speculation because they can't prove it. Understandable, but more or less, you know, there, there, there's, there's got to be a reason, if anything else. But the easier one is very simple. You know, you treat me well, I treat you well. You, know, you treat me bad, I treat you bad. Uh, obviously, if your cultivation is getting better, you can change around. But the the default response is like that. Uh, so let's not go too too much into that direction. Um, so basically, it's chapter one. Chapter two talks about merits. You know, things that gets you better, gets your um, improvements. All right. But uh, like, what is the good thing? Number one is obviously loving kindness, and the first person you can do that is towards your own kin, which is your parents, your siblings. And then extend to your friends, uh, to your partners, uh, you know, spouse, and then towards the strangers, 
and then even better towards the stream, uh, the people you don't like, uh, or then towards the people you hate, uh, to kind of break through the barriers. Those are good stuff. But the, there are many books to talk about that, right? But this book value lies in telling you what goes wrong and the consequences of it, all right? That means what could easily go wrong during in different situation, and last two months I've been talking about, you know, things that are easily committed by people with authority. Uh, part what part two? Part one I think is um, just general. You know what consider as unwholesome deeds, deeds that will cause negative impact on yourself. Uh, you know, so this one is one of the many part that we carve out so that we can easily discuss. So I don't want to drag too long. So basically there's a whole picture. So now we are at the end of this part two, where we talk about what can go wrong in our daily conduct via speech people with power, with authority. You know, you're in government, you're in high office, or maybe you're in charge of a department, an organization uh, in your companies or organizations, or even being a parent. You're in charge of your kids, but mostly for, towards the people with power. And we talk about this, all right? So the end of this is about um, issuing punishments that are inappropriate to the crime. Punishment do not befit the crime, all right? Those are the literal understanding of the word. Ru qing wei zhong, jian sha jia nu. First thing with Ru qing wei zhong, that means what's supposed to be the punishment does not befit the crime hence it's unfair and if it's unfair all right either it's excessive in this case it's um, excessive they, they say that people who commit um, small stuff or who commit light offenses will punish uh, disproportionately were given too heavy of a punishment hence causing um, more misery and the point of this word goes back to why do we have a legal system in the first place, right? This thing affects our life, daily life. Uh, understandably, we are not um, in the law firm or anything. We don't care about this every day. Um, but if we apply, because we have, we have ability to think, right? We don't, we don't just think literally. We can imply it in your own situation. Has there been a situation where you might disproportionately you know, um, issued your judgment on others, you know, and that action might not be as obvious as, you know, maybe punish them, or put them in jail, might be, you know, your action might be uh, a bit too harsh on that person. Uh, because based on your, uh, you know, maybe preconceived notion or, you know, bias, you might hurt something about this person and then you might, you know, react negatively towards them. Uh, so this this kind of thing we need to um, be aware of, you know, because we have a lot of you know um, emotions and all this uh, thing that carries forward. We that's why we have cultivation to detach from this, not not to be stringed by this, you know, to be how to say to be informed. I like the word to be informed, but not to be controlled. But to be, be informed by emotions means you, you know. You can show it appropriately during the right time, you know, take, get the cue, you know, and act appropriately, but not to be, you know, and en enslave it and not to be, you know, follow 100% impulsively follow towards it. Uh, this takes skill, skillfulness. So in this case, um, people who issue disproportionate judgment usually comes out of three sections. Either is preconceived the hatred. Basically, they already hated this group of people and this happened to be under his case, then he just passed a heavy judgment, no matter what they did. All right. This goes very easily in uh, 18th centuries, 19th centuries legal system. Storing a loaf of bread might end up you know, being shipped to Australia. I don't know if it's true or not, might need to do a fact check, but you know, part of the, how this settlement was found is because there's too much prisoner in the, in the old UK, and then they was thrown to here. So, yeah, it's quite excessive, you know, torn them up from their home and push them here. Of course, it turns out to be better in the long run, obviously, not for everyone. It's quite a sensitive topic. But 
you know, it's an excessive punishment. You know, some of them might be, you know, um, some of them might be, uh, you know, lop their hand off when they're stealing stuff. Like by our modern standard, all right. So this goes back to why do we have legal system? What's the whole point of telling you you will get this kind of punishment if you commit this offense? Is it just because they like to punish people? They like to show that they are powerful? No, all right. That's not the reason. All right. The reason is we need to have uh, a system of you know boundaries in our life because we. This is not a perfect world. This is not a world where everyone able to understand the five precepts and able to hold the five precepts. If everyone knows five precepts, we're getting very close to pure land in manifestation of it. Right? This is pure land, but it's hidden. So what is actually manifested, what what actually come to reality is Wu Zhou Er Si, you know, Jie Zhou Ming Zhou Fan Zhou Zhong Si Zhou Ming Zhou Zhong. All right, the the short life, the the lots of um. Now Buddha said this is a five turbulent era, type five turbulent world. You know, one of the turbulent is a lot of um, fun now, which is a lot of uh, troubles, a lot of pain, sufferings, and it's most of, and and you know, uh, short life. Life is not long enough. By the time I learn something, I already passed uh, eighty, and then it's too late. I gotta say goodbye. If I'm not unlucky, I have to start. Um, If I'm unlucky, uh, I fall into lower realm. If I'm, you know, well learned and well cultivated, next life I still have to start again, even though I can pick up faster than past life. That's the reality. All right, zhong zhen zuo, you know, many people, many thoughts, many view, and then they can't they can't see each other's view properly and mix it up and misunderstanding, you know, and and this conflict happens because of this misunderstanding.、Uh, Because we can't settle down and actually understand each other,、uh, there are ways to navigate around it. But this is one of the problem we have. So there's so much problems, all right, manifested in this book. All right, hence we need to have a legal system. There's no legal system in Buddhism,、uh, in in, in Pure Land. Okay, there's no legal system in Hua Zhang Shijie, but there's legal system in our world because we need this.、Uh, without this, chances are it will get really messy, muddy. But despite this. Legal system is to draw boundary. We also need to educate. We can't just say I punish you, and I can guarantee you will not do it again. No, of course they will do it again if you don't tell them why, you don't tell them the full consequences, or even better if they don't suffer it closely, like if they don't not at the other end of the criminal act or the offense act. Right? Say education. Why? First, why do you have speeding tickets? Why do you have red lights? Everyone is smart here. We all know, right? If you're at the receiving end, where you're driving your wife, your husband, your parents, your children, someone just drive at 200 km per hour, or maybe 160 miles per hour in US, and you know towards you, ignoring the red light, ignoring the、um, uh, the the speed limits, and run towards you while you lawfully cross the junction. And what happened? You know, life lost. All right, those are the most obvious example I can bring out. The whole point of legal system. All right. Yes, these people will still offend it, but if we don't even put any measurements, it will get even more offended easily. Because some people just don't care. All right. Now, this goes first level, like punishment. It goes deeper. You need to think about why do we have this in the first place, not what. What is the law? What is the offense? Why? Why is this there?、Uh, if everyone can take very high high precaution when they drive, you know they they are being、um, you know considerate of each others when give ways and passing lanes. I'm pretty sure there won't be too much law needed. There will be just basics like you know don't cross the red light, don't speed. That's it. There won't be so much double demerits and all that systems、um, because everyone can hold themselves back and. You know, allowing things to go through lightly. So education means that we need to inform why. Why do we have these restrictions? Why do we need to need to be、um, need to have these systems? So to put this disproportionately means that we are violating the whole this point of legal system. Is to 
teach us the consequences of our action. Everything has consequences. All right, Basic, basically a mini version of cause and effect, of karma. All right, it's a it's one one arm of the karma in a sense. All right, it's it's um, the real karma that really wakes people up is when you are actually receiving what you have given to others. All right, say you there are stories right in the Gaiyin Pian. A lot of these um, uh, treaties they talk about stories of people say murder p- other people out of greed for their money, uh, or or lust for their wives, or or out of you know hatred stuff like that. And then many years later, they either receive a, a children who is very rebellious, who spend all their money in, in the end, or they have never have a peace, or their own spouse get taken away, get seduced away, or their own children get uh, you know, killed. Uh, this thing happens you know, throughout histories, vendettas. Uh, those, are, those, are, those are cause and effect. Right. So going back to this, punish excessively in criminal punishment like offenses. Is that it's just that people who, um, you know, um, do not uh, follow reasons and clouded by greed, corruptions, hatred towards other people, or it's pure negligence, just being lazy on the job or not being aware of it. All right. So in legal system, the attitude should be compassion. It should always come me out from, you know, if I can give him a lighter sentence, I will. All right. And then it should come out from, you know, um, if I can rehabilitate, rehabilitate that person, I will. All right. Doesn't matter what that person is, you know, really unrepentant or not. Obviously, if they're still unrepentant, go ahead. You know, you have done, you have done what you need to do. All right. But it must always come out from that. Can I try to pull this person back? If I can't, all right, if I can, I will do my best. If I can't, I will give him the measurements that he can come back. Uh, it's not that easy thing, okay? Once you go into the jail, chances are most people learn even better ways of committing crime. That's the irony of it. What's supposed to be a center of, you know, say maybe they repent their wrong passings, it becomes a place where they can master their craft. It's a university of criminology. Or University of Criminal Act, they can get better connection. It's like me going to bank and get better network in building business. For them, they also getting in there, in, in jail to get better network of building underground business. Such is life. <laughs> Yet, you know, we still need to understand. No matter what the consequences, this phenomena is, we must not forget the sacred duty of. You know, law and order. These things are supposed to be um, first step towards teaching people, you know, to be considerate, compassionate, at least courteous of each other. You know, at least think about, you know, if I don't like this, I won't do this on other people. Very simple, very basic stuff. All right. That mindset, if it can apply everywhere in the most ground level, like basic family education, into school, you know, if I don't like this, I won't do that. I don't like to be bullied. I don't like to be ridiculed on my braces, on my specs, on my you know, my 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 body weight, or uh, you know, then I won't do that to others people. You know, there are many ways to make a joke. All right, it doesn't have to be at the expense of people all the time. Yes, it, it might not be as great, but you know, there are ways to do it. Okay, better. We can do it better. All right. So this this thing is important. All right, like um, that's the whole point. Legal system should be able to achieve. Of course, I'm an idealist. People can use that. You're idealist. Yes. So what? All right. If we don't strive to get out of it, all right. I say, ah, oh, six rooms, so hard. You know, why get out? Enjoy. Done. Uh, I can just enjoy my human and heavenly realm. Why do I want to get out of here? And then the enjoyment is huge. But you know. What happens after you finish your enjoyment? You're gonna fall out of your merits. You're gonna eventually run it out because we can't guarantee ourselves we will be able to generate merits every single time. That's the hardest part. You're not attaining even the sotapanna, the first level of enlightenment. That means you are guaranteed we will not fall into the lower three realms. All right? If you can achieve that little 
progress in Buddhist cultivation, then you can say, okay, I can take my time. Because you guarantee you will not fall below human level. But we, none of us can say that here. Or some of us might be, but they're hiding it. But anyway, the point is, majority situation, all right, we can't, all right, we can't guarantee that we will not fall into lower drug. Now we may be a good person, but when we thrown into other situation in our next life, or maybe even in future, all right, can we guarantee our character is standing strong and untested? We're not tested. None of us are tested. Most of us are not tested. Not in a severe way. All right? And no, I, I'm not saying we should seek that trouble. The trouble will come to us, don't worry. All right? um, we will all be tested some way or another in, in very level of degree. This thing is definitely a must. And the bigger your wow, the bigger the test. The bigger you... Your, your goal is the bigger you have to climb because you have to go further extra steps all right and our no, none other than our teacher master ching kong he's tested very severely not as severe as buddha you know getting carved into pieces back in the past life but severe enough that most people can't take it sometimes you know it's constant being pushed around being like a pushover in a sense, um, you know, it's unpleasant. No one likes that. But if you can understand why, you know, this this goal is bigger than this, and you understand that I can take, you know, my aversion and twist it into not twist it, convert it into energy to for me to you know get better at my duty, you know, whatever I'm doing at the moment. You know, to serve other people, to get better, to get uh, less shackled by my ego, then we made it. He made it. We made it too, if we understand why. And we immerse more into these ideas. And we allow some of these ideas, eventually we seep through our action and thoughts. All right. So going back to here, all right, the second part, if express anger and condemnation towards those sentenced to capital and corporal punishment. All right? Why? Chances, most of the time, those are people who has committed severe crime, crime that is disgusting or that kind of deserve this. Not all of them, most of the time, right? People who get to that level of death penalty, chances are they are either murderer, rapist, or something like that. So those things we despise in a society. But why do we um, not allow to be angry towards them, right? I am. I confess. I might sometimes watch the movie, get caught up, or watch a historical documentary, seeing some of those people uh, that got their how to say, rough end of the law, or rough end of the justice, especially in World War Two and all that situation. I count somehow. I was like, yes, but then I think of you know this word, Jian Sa Then I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't. Why? Why can't we cheer for those? Like say punishment of Hitler, or punishment of um, or, or, or uh, ending of some you know brutal people uh, who, who has no compassion to us, you or anyone else. Why can't I be cheering for that? Anyone has any ideas? Why is it not good to express anger and condemnation towards those people who has somehow done say done the mistakes? But this is a discussion, guys. Why can't we cheer it? Why, or why can't we at least feel like, yes, you know, relief or something like that? What should we feel instead? In Chinese as well, it's, it's just say Jian Sa Jianu is one of the transgression, something that we should not do. So let's think about it. Why? Why not? Anyone? Or any other topics? I'll bring it back. So. No? Okay. You can chip in when you're comfortable. Um, this is because for your own benefit. That other person might be unrepentant. Whether they are repentant or not, if they are repentant, it's easier to understand. But if those people are really unrepentant or really fanatical, uh, they're really brutal and you know very cold in their act of murder or genocide or Holocaust, stuff like that, or you know, 
all this story here, Unit 79 in Northeast China, all this terrible, terrible stuff. You know, those are sins committed by them. Those are transgression. Those are blood debt committed by them. Rest assured they will have to pay it eternally in, the, in, in, the, in our sense of time, eternally. I know there's a limit, but that limit is long. One billion year. It's, it's, it has a limit, but it's a long, long limit. Understand this helps you as well to get to that point where, you know, if I am going to be, you know, learning, you know, how to improve my life, the way I see my world, the, the world needs to improve as well. Well, how, how does it improve? It has to be, um, how to say, understand, clear, you have need to have clarity on what the situation is, good or bad, that is important. Hence the previous clause, you need to make discern right from wrong, all right? Unable to do that, you will cause a lot of sufferings to yourself towards others. But above that, all right, you also need to understand this kind of people, chances are, you know, they have terrible, terrible thing happening to them. Say the brutal treatment of other people might be, co- might be caused by the brutal treatment of these people in the first place. He was treated like that, he passed on that kind of action towards other people. Or the institution is encouraging this kind of, uh, say, in you know, World War II, the Japanese, maybe they were treated that way. Uh, I mean, this is the target object of my cheer when they were punished. Like, they were treated brutally as well. I'm not saying they are forgiven. They, are, they, they will get their blood debt to be paid. But the point for us, for the health of our mind, or the sanity of our consciousness, or of our mind, why bear the burdens of other people's sins? All right? It's a figurative speech when people say Christians bearing the sins on their cross. Those is are out of compassion. He's compassionate. But if each of us say, oh, the God or Buddha will bear my sins, I don't have to do anything. That's a stupid action. Because we, we, will, we will allow ourselves to commit errors and say, it's fine. Amitabha will forgive me. I can keep doing it. That's not how it works. Just because people, people say that because they have that heart, the compassion. What we should do instead is we need to work harder to change our unwholesome deeds because there's someone out there at the end really willing to take us in no matter how crappy our action is. They are fully compassionate. They can be in the form of Jesus, they can be in the form of Allah, they can be in the form of um, Buddha. For our case, Amitabha. They will take us in. As long as you're willing to chant his name, let go of all these unwholesome deeds. There is a condition. All right? You need to be willing to at least try to stop committing that. All right? So on this case, we need to learn to, from these sages to be the giving one. All right? This person is unrepentant, very bad, but they won't do that forever. Once they pass away, we understand there's a past life, there's a future life. All right? They're going to suffer a lot. Something that you do not wish on any form of enemy you have or any form of bad guy you have. When you see it yourself, you will see it. Right? When you achieve a certain level of samadhi, you will see that and you will cry. You will understand the pain, the sufferings. These are just not worth it. All this little transgression, it snowball into something terrible in the form of hell realm, hungry ghost realm, even animal. Don't look so far. Animal. If you don't believe in other elements, at least look at animal life. If you look closely, say I watch a documentary of a wasp versus bees, honeybees, the brutality of their battle. We look outside, we say, this is a beautiful picture, it's spring. You know, the flower blossoms, and I can sing like, a, you know, in a Disney princess or prince. But when you look into the actual, you know, I'm not telling you to think positive, negative, just see things as it is. The, 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 the territorial war, the, the, you know, the weak conquers, strong conquers the weak. It's brutal. It's excessive sometimes. All right? Look at animal realm. That's why Buddha cries when he look at this situation. Because he, he can see beyond, he understand that, you know, this world, you know, chances are a lot of them are piled upon bloods, upon bloods, upon bloods. And he understands the reason is because all this vendetta are never ending. 
recreated this situation again and again, again and again. Even among humans, the wars, the from smaller thing of arguing between husband and wife to bigger thing like war between nations. Right? These are vendettas that can never end unless we one side can let go. So understand this depth. There's no reason for us to, you know, not to practice compassion. In this case it's compassion, the second part. This person is being dictated I mean it's deserve the punishment, but you know, even though we we are rightfully, you know, angry at this person, rightfully, you know, relieved this person is finally apprehended by the iron hands of law. But the tragedy is, you know, instead of someone chances are people who commit this high crime are very smart and talented. Otherwise they won't even get anywhere close to that level of brutality or any any sort of you know, people with little ability or little competence, they can't do big uh, achievements. You know? Think about that. All right? People with little com- uh, uh, capability or, you know, they are not really smart, they are not really like able to do a lot of harm, right, if they go into the wrong way, the, the, the wrong view. All right? Only people with great capability, great intelligence, can do great harm or great benefits. Depends on the path, you know, the condition they were going on. So these people who were sentenced this kind of heavy punishment most likely are people with very talented, smart people, mostly, mostly. And we also weep at the passing of these people who could have been a beacon or used for better purpose in the society or in our life. All right, so th- I'm just giving a lot of you know, thoughts out there. You don't have to, if you know, take it with a pinch of salt. But you know, it's first is for yourself. You know, do not um, allow criminal action or sins of the others become the seeds of your own sins or your own unwholesome deeds. Right? It's better to use sins. It's it's in English. You know, um, and 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 then second level is. One, if you want to be free from this kind of, you know, hatred, vengeance, or you know, greed, last, this cycle, you need. We need to learn, you know, samadhi. We need to learn, think. We need to have um, degree of composure, and that mental strength comes from, you know, able to um, reflect on our thought constantly. Understand that I don't have to follow this path down ways, you know. Uh, an eye for an eye turns the whole world blind even a vengeful thought even a, a, a unwholesome thought no matter how justified it is will create consequences in future All right. it might come in a form of when you're in position in power and that person happened to be under you you might do something excessive towards them something like that this is very dangerous um, so if you cultivate compassion to- uh, acceptance you know Chances are, you know, you will uh, first be able to see that person more than just one dimensional villain. We all liked, you know, more complicated, more, more how to say, more interesting characters, isn't it? Even for villains nowadays, right? We don't watch, we don't, we don't, go, we don't like to watch a one dimensional villain, right? If anything, you want to watch a villain which is not fully a villain, a hero who is not fully a hero. You kind of understand where they come from, and in the end of the day. You know, some people happen to be more extreme than the other people, but their motivation is the same. They're trying to protect something. They're trying to right some wrong. And some people do it too extremely, and then it becomes something, uh, a tragedy, uh, a massacre. Some people can withhold themselves from overindulging into that thought, and hence, they appear to be more, they, 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 you know, they're able to walk out of this path with a brighter outcome. That's much more closer to reality, I believe. All right. So same goes for this. These people who punish, chances are they have issues. And if you don't understand any of their issues or don't want to understand any of their issues, at the very least, for the sake of your own heart, we need to avoid giving in. I can't say that you don't have that emotion. It's hard. I have that. Uh, giving in to this vengeful thought, to this angry thought, or in their very least, the cheer on punishment of the others. It's unbecoming of our cultivation. Uh, if anything else, if we want to 
be above this or it uh, be you know be be more um be more opened more lenient uh, open towards some um, you know basically what if you want to liberate from this chain of hate or chain of um your 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 unwholesome thought then this is one thing we cannot do cheer at the punishment of the others no matter how justified it is all right we need to be compassionate we need to have that i want to save this person or in not hero complex but you know the right thing to do you know if i can help them out of that path i will something like that no matter how weak my capability is I, if i can help a little bit you know but this kind of mindset will help you to convert your own greed hatred ignorance because what is this if not indulging in greed hatred ignorance crime is just a result of indulging in one of these you know gumpen fanau one of these root troubles root um ignorance uh, root unwholesome the 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 habit that we brought from past life sorry guys i'm passionate about this all right if you want to be bodhisattva be serious about it think start from this point you know the point of contact with outside reflects what's inside and and we slowly you know cultivate that you know we understand the world is very cruel and suffering because we been cultivating that kind of mindset hence we created a world like that right and we collectively forged the world like that and 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 I'm part of this uh I have contribute part of this to here no matter how invisible it seems so now if I want to turn it around hence able to improve my life and the people around me that i need to start cultivating that sort of mindset all right there is a way from sufferings and and sufferings caused by greed hatred ignorance and how do we see it like i say reference point bodhisattva is equality buddha is uh sincerity purity so basically people who cultivate full equality full purity um you know full awakening all right if they gradually improve that their world be gradually become pure hence the land is pure pure land all right chanting all this amito for is just to tell you you know your mind must be like him your thought must be like him all right it's easier it's a it's a tool for us right to turn around our mouth our thought our action to be more like him if we don't understand his action and deeds if we have full confidence 100% even though we don't understand any of it we're able to do it but for us who has access to knowledge and all that and all our ideas and blah is best we understand it all right all right not all of us have strong under un, 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 unadulterated faith on that it's hard all right we need to talk about it explain it discuss it bring out the issues and then you know from this kind of a foundational course we start to appreciate the depth of what we've been doing all the time in the temple or everywhere else all right it's a it's a tool that is very very convenient it's just it's so convenient that we thought is and sophisticated we thought is nothing it's not it's very sophisticated the phone that you have in your hand is a evolution of how many years of invention smartphone right it has mail it has call able to call able to mail able to take photos god able to you know play videos uh, a lot of these functions right back then you can't think of it it combines all in one all right it's convenient because it's cost sophisticated I mean I mean of voice convenient even myself I overlook it times then how do you do it if you really want to explore explore but understand that if if you actually experience it the convenience that you have uh makes you understand how sophisticated it is this need takes time we need to talk about it we need to have this teaching that's why master ching gong has 60 years of talking and this is not enough mate we need to keep going in our own capacity we have this session because of that in our own language that we understand english all right so it's it's all right 
you know, take, relax, take your time, and you know, let it sink in. If it doesn't make sense to you, I'll try my best to bring out some points that I have um, expanded on. Uh, those things have to support our faith, our confidence, our give us capability to test it as well, and then test. Hopefully, will bring out confidence, erase all the doubts, stronger doubts, uh, stronger confidence. We can do stronger things. You know, we can face stronger test, stronger challenge. All right. So summarize. All right. Um, from the literal understanding, legal system is to teach. All right. The education. It has to go towards education rather than just purely saying, "Don't do bad things. Bad things、uh, will punish you." It's not enough. It has to be educational. All right. Uh, even for those people, the second half, even for those people who commit crime deserving of this kind of heavy penalty, all right, we need to have a right mindset regarding to that. We can't cheer. We can't allow ourselves to indulge in cheers. It's fine to feel relief. It's fine to feel like at least we get this monster out of the way. But we cannot allow ourselves to indulge in that thought too much. All right, we can't allow ourselves, let alone allow ourselves to sink deeper into that. Hatred, because that means you channel yourself, you tune yourself low to that level, to the level of hate and vengefulness, and that is not healthy for yourself, your development of your relationship, your career, right? Expand outwards your own, you know, your own cultivations, or in in if the whole society is vengeful and hateful, you know. You can see what happened in the past centuries, right? People who don't know any better, misguided. Burn a young girl on a fire just because they thought she looks weird. Result of ignorance, hatred, greed, and then not being taught well. Right, so don't allow that to happen. If anything, convert towards what a mature a person would do. A more mature person would able to see this, understand this is wrong. Understand that there are consequences. Understand that this person is doing it as a result of consequences, and understand the tragedy of this situation. Because chances are, this person was encountering some terrible situation. If they not, then feel sad that there's nothing to help. There's no tool to help this person out of that kind of um, negative um, thinking that leads to this kind of action. All right. So understand that you're able to feel not not feel, but you're able to feel more compassionate and able to say,、um, you know, more motivated in your life. Say you can be kinder, you can be more、um, driven.、Uh, that's how bodies of art operates. They they get more driven. As more suffering goes on, they appear more orphaned. They driven even more. You know, you can burn them on a fire. You can cut them in ten pieces. They can, but their samadhi grows. Nothing can touch them, because their heart is, you know, full of light. Nothing can touch them. All right. The more suffering you inflict on that person, the more love that person will be able to generate. That's the level we want to be. That's a must go to path if you want to be Buddha. It does not happen in one life. All right. In our case, we go to Pure Land, and we still have to do this, learn about this. It's just we have a better tools. That's it. All right. Okay, guys.、Uh, I think I'll wrap it up. Basically,、yeah. in Chinese, we have a word. But every organization,、yeah. if they want to coexist properly, there are six qualities condition that needs to be met. In Buddha, we call it Liu He Jing. But I don't want to go too deep into that. All right, because、yeah. we don't have to go that much. The first sentence already explains the reason. Jian He Tong Jing. Can you say that again, sir? Okay, 六合敬 is six. 合我和你的合敬是恭敬的敬啊。嗯、uh, um, ，if you are growing in speed and in more re- emotional resilience in this environment, and these manager are still somehow showing, you know, empathy, not like, you know, hundred percent, you know, all with the top, uh, then you maybe can try to apply. Are they like this when all? Services is on. If services is on, they put on their game face and they say you have to do this and do that, and they don't do that to you outside the service time. 
and probably it's because they are having a high standard in their services. And in restaurant industry, I heard that's why I cannot ever give you a more solid advice than people inside. They are brutal. Yeah, right. If it's a high end or better, you know, quality restaurant, they would demand everything. And if you can take it, you can bring this quality everywhere. Way better than I have. Right. I'm not there yet. But you know, if you can take make use of this opportunity to improve yourself, um, go ahead. Okay. It's a it's a very uh, uh, um, I say it's a many message in there. So so self affirmation, right? Like be, being able to say that, you know, it's not all like oh, bad 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 bad. Like you know, this is part of me that is positive, something that I can bring out, offer to the table, to the people around me, to myself first, to the people around me. Right, let's face it, we we deal with ourselves every day, first thing, before we deal with anyone else. Hence, you feel feel terrible with your anger because he's like, oh, I don't like this feeling. Obviously, no one likes angry, but it just come out, and then, and then it gets more and more intense sometimes. Um, and then, and just now you say about you know, don't just be kind for the sake of kind, and you no, know, just be moral just because I want to be a moral person. But the reason of um, able to affirm that your ground, where am I? Where's my progress? What am I doing well? Now, sometimes we need to do that as well. I, I I'm aware of that. We 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 check into ourselves and say, I'm doing well in this patch. All right, I I want to do better. I want to go further. And of course, I am not so good at this part. This part is terrible. Like you say, anger. In my case, I you know I procrastinate. I I waste my time ruminating on useless stuff. I feel terrible. But it's okay. It's already passed. And and what I need to do right now is how can I make it better? How can I improve on it? Yeah, we need to accept it first. I think we need to accept it. Like, like this is me. I have flaws. I have issues, and I acknowledge my issues. I acknowledge my flaws. I'm not saying that I'm a Buddha. No one is in the first place. Uh, I mean, no one is immediately. So, but I acknowledge my strength. I can do this. I can do that. And I proven myself. I want to do better at the aspect, while also, you know, getting better in dealing with my flaws. That's uh, probably um, how we progressed, uh, stage by stage. Thank you. All right, rotate around, see the bigger world. Definitely a thing because it happens to my colleagues. They all they do the same. They get depressed, mentally health uh, issue because of this depressing workplace. That everyone was like, not really care about the work very rude and all that and then once they move on to the different job they were like different person they're more relaxed they're happier um, in my case because I, I I like that pump so I was like yeah you put make me angry I'm gonna do better <laughs> than I show you show you this and then I actually did that and I was like I'm actually bored I, was like, oh, I want to get out of here because I did the, all I can do so I move on to different place so everyone has different needs acknowledge it and then plan according to it you can't be well you, you can't you can't be happier you can't help other people when you can't be well and able to sustain yourself that's that's very realistic and that's very true that's the first step okay okay thank you thank you so much uh thank you for your uh, uh time guys um i know it's very late now uh, but i appreciate your attendance i'll do another we'll continue every fortnight all right but i this is not official yet but we plan to have face to face going say in two weeks from now next not next not this next sunday perhaps not planned yet we we haven't met each other for a long time we're going to do face to face and we don't know the content yet but it will be something about buddha story and then we have a discussion like this you know if anything to bring to the table go it go ahead all right, so I'll give, keep you guys update um, on our upcoming meet, meetups. So thank you so much. Let's do 10 times Amitabha 4, Dedication of Merits, and we'll wrap it up. Amitabha 4, Amitabha 4, Amitabha 4, Amitabha 4.
阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。May the merits and virtue accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the suffering of those in three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind, by the body mind, be vowed to born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitabha. Namo Amitabha. Thank you, everyone. Um, may you be happy and feel at peace. So we'll see you again in next four nights. Um, feel free to share anything you want to share on uh, Facebook. Okay. Good night. See ya. <laughs>